I said, well, you know what? Since the agenda is the vaccine, well, let's look at what the vaccine's doing in the microbiome. And that's at the same time as they started rolling these vaccines, I started enrolling doctors that basically were getting vaccinated. And I'm like, can I get your stools before and after you get vaccinated? And sure enough, people would come to me and they're like, hey, I heard you're like, you're testing the microbiome. I don't, I want to have my baseline because just in case I change, I want to know what microbes I had before. So I'm like, yeah, happy to do it. So, you know, this study, that was again, something I undertook myself and paid for myself. We, by the way, we applied for grants and all that waste of time, waste of money. So I basically just dumped my money into this trial. So the first four patients I started noticing a month later, the bifidobacteria, this important microbe, is, this, is dropping in patients pre and post vaccination. So then I started like asking myself, wait a minute, what's going on here? I mean, is it creating a bifidophage? You know, because this is precision medicine. This is forensics of the gut, right? You've got your microbiome this way before and you've got it after and it's the same patient and only a certain group of microbes are getting killed. You got to pay attention. So then, you know, 10, 20, 30, 34 patients later, we're seeing this, you know, killing of the bifidobacteria. And so I wasn't going to, first of all, there's no way I was going to publish this because nobody would have taken that. So I decided to submit it to the American College of Gastro as a presentation, as a poster. It got accepted at the American College of Gastro as a poster, and then it won the Best Research Award as a poster. So all my colleagues called me and said, hey, I saw your data. That's incredible. How do you think this is happening? What do you, the vaccine's supposed to be, you know, improving your immunity. And we all know bifidobacteria is a huge part of immunity. How do you think it's happening? So then I said, I think it's creating a bacteriophage or bifidophage. And what we noticed is in four patients that we followed, which were amazing shape, you know, we followed them for um, 90 days and then next thing you know, um, their bifidobacteria dropped to like zero, from like a million to like zero. So it kept persisting. So there was a persistence in the damage and not only 90 days, but six months, nine months later. So that was the thing that started making me panic. And then as we were looking at the microbiome of newborns um, to mothers who were breastfeeding, we started noticing that there's no bifidobacteria in those newborns. So we asked ourselves, well, I mean, because newborns are supposed to have a ton of bifidobacteria, right? 90% of the microbiome of babies is bifidobacteria. So we said, well, how come these babies born to moms that are breastfeeding that were vaccinated have zero bifidobacteria? Is the spike protein going to the breast milk, into the baby's gut, and killing whatever the baby's trying to build? And so because I was doing work on autism, and I noticed, you know, one of the commonality and common findings of autistic children is that loss of bifidobacteria. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, maybe that's how it happens, right? Maybe you're killing off your bifidobacteria and then two years down the road, you just, your kid stops talking. So this whole, you know, it was serendipitous, really. I mean, this whole discovery, because, you know, understanding what the microbiome looks like in Alzheimer's, in old people, in overweight patients, in Parkinson's and, you know, and um, kids, healthy kids, you know, kind of brought it all together for me. So I had a different vision than everybody else. I was looking at how to treat the virus, knowing something nobody knew. And that was really, you know, it was kind of epic. But at the same time, I knew that, hey, you know, they can't prove me wrong and if they are going to prove me wrong, well, let's see why. But definitely this needs to be looked at because the microbiome has such an importance in neurological problems, in cancer, so in Crohn's, in Lyme. So, you know, we just published uh, two posters that were presented at the same college at, um, where basically loss of bifidobacteria was noted in Crohn's patients and in Lyme patients. So bifidobacteria has a big role in disease, in my opinion. And so we have to pay attention to what's killing it. So, I mean, your hypothesis right now is that, that it's the spike, whether the spike is coming from the virus or whether it's coming from the vaccine, that Correct. this is actually causing this, it's, it's killing the bifidobacteria, which is creating a problem. Correct. 
And, this, and this is what you're hoping, you know, some serious research is done yes, around. Yes. Yeah. So, and I, and we are doing something to try to prove that. Uh, so it's coming along, uh, you know, obviously this is research and it's slow developing. Research is now fast. You know, it's one thing proves another, it proves another and opens the door to another. You know, I'll, do, I'll give you an, an example of, of research during this pandemic. You know, one of the things that I did myself was kill my bifidobacteria because I wanted to see, well, what increases the bifidobacteria, right? So I was the guinea pig. I was the guinea pig the whole pandemic. And, um, you know, first to see, you know, if I'm exposed to it, etc. And it, it basically what I realized, one of the things I was drinking a ton of kefir and my bifido is not increasing. I'm taking my, I'm not really good at taking my vitamins, right? Because I'm stressed and I'm busy and I, I'm not a pill taker. Um, but essentially I kind of like let it die. And, um, I, I started testing my kefir and I, I looked cause we passed it through the machine and we noticed that the, the kefir didn't have bifidobacteria in there, even though it says bifidobacteria. So I went to whole foods and Ralph, this is research because here I am, like I've just killed my bifido. I'm trying to boost it. Why isn't it increasing? So of course it opens a new research. And I went to Ralph's and, and the Whole Foods, picked up all the products that said bifidobacteria in the back. And we took 23 products. One of them was a $27 tonic water that had bifidobacteria in there. So I said, well, this got to be bifido because $27. I mean, come on. Anyway, so we, we shook them. We took the sample. Only three of them had actually bifido, had, bifido had bifidobacteria. Unbelievable. So what, and, and so you become an aware customer, right? So this is what research is all about. Research is about, you know, let me, why isn't this happening? Why isn't it? Let me figure out why this is not happening. And of course my kefir didn't have bifidobacteria. How am I going to increase my bifido if it doesn't have bifido, right? So then I started doing my own stuff, like, you know, the fermented foods and all the stuff that I know how to do. And basically I happy to say I'm back to my normal bifidobacteria. Uh, but you know, this is, this is what research is about. It's finding one thing and then opening up a new science, a new research to kind of discover. And so that was fascinating.